Cryptids Boy. The likes of Loch Ness Monster, Mothman and Sasquatch. I love me a Mothman. But are they just folklore from yesteryear to frighten children into behaving? Or are they stories from creatures long extinct? Or are they even out there now, living in secret, trying to stay out of human sight? Welcome to Cheeky Tales presents Savage's Spooky Spectacular 3, as we leave no gum tree unturned as we look into one of Australia's own cryptids, the Yowie. That's my bit. I stole it. Yeah, I know you did. Like a dog. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to YouTube. We're on YouTube Ooh. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you this episode will be the first uploaded at the right time on YouTube. Oh, we're we actually uploading to YouTube. Yeah, there's three episodes as of recording that are uploaded. One of them's the trailer. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I never actually watched that when you sent it to me. Yeah, you dog. Sorry. But, um, yeah, there are three episodes uh, up now. Uh, this episode will go up and then I'll start uploading on the off week. I'll upload one of the old episodes so until we get to the point where everything's on there. When are we getting the webcam set up so we can... You know, I was talking about that just before. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got Bree's camera now, which would be really good for like a all three of us view. Mm-hmm. And then we could get like uh, that's gonna, GoPros. That's going to increase editing oh, so much. A significant <laughs> amount of workload <laughs> increase here. Yeah. Instax 360. Just do that. Just no. We'll have both, right? So have the big one and have the Insta three hundred and sixty in the center. So you don't have to have face cams. You can just edit the. the yeah, angle. true. Yeah, you just have to have the one camera in the middle. Yeah, as we well as the the camera camera. Mm. As far as I know, multi cam editing is super easy. Yeah, and well, then we get the fun of building a set. <laughs> true. In Aaron's land. True. In Aaron's land. True. <laughs> Every month. <laughs> oh well, welcome YouTube. It's good to have you with us. If you found us on the YouTubes. Yeah. It's nice to finally be on there again. So what's new? I don't know. What's the new YouTube? Get out. (laughs) I'm not accepting that. I don't want to talk about anything that we talked about last episode, so we can just just continue on. Last episode was before the grand final. Oh, true. Okay. Yes, yes, that's right. You did edit in the- um, Edit in the three different- Yep. Well, have you you watched any movies? Have I watched any movies? No. I'm deep down the rabbit hole of uh, college football on Netflix, though. And soccer documentaries? Yeah, Beckham's good. I began watching Paul Blart Mall Cop. Oh, nice. It's terrible. Sorry, Kevin James. It's a great B-grade movie. What? That's 100% the kind of thing that you'd be like, well, this is stupid. I don't think anyone should watch this garbage. Kevin James sucks. And now you're telling me you're watching it? Yeah, I watched it, yeah. Talladega Nights is great, though. Talladega Nights is brilliant. I didn't quite get into Paul Blart too much. I recently finally got around to watching a movie I've been wanting to watch for a long time, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, everyone talks about that. It's Jamie Lee Curtis, isn't it? Yeah. She is in it, but she's not. It's uh, Michelle Yeoh, who's the lead. Yo! And Short Round from Indiana Jones. Mm. Yeah, pretty cool. He's popping up everywhere. He's on Loki season two as well. There you go. Yeah. I can't oh, actually- I finally watched Mandalorian season three. Oh, yeah. This guy. Aaron doesn't watch Star Wars. <laughs> I know. Or Marvel no, no, TV no, no. Shows. I watched Star Wars. Kenobi was fantastic. A shocker or whatever it's called. That's a on my to watch list. The Mandalorian is one of the slowest things did I've ever get, seen. How far in did you watch? Did you follow Rachel's five episode rule? No, I probably got three yeah, episodes. Yeah, there's in. your problem. Yeah, the rule but like I don't think it's I don't think it's unfair to say that I shouldn't have to watch six hours of content to start liking something. The f- they're shorter episodes than that. Number one. Secondly, you know that the first episodes of any show are f- oh are, yeah are really boring. I did yeah. not like episode one and two of Rick and Morty. Yeah, neither did I. I was going to say Rick and Morty. I got the to f- episode three, Anatomy Park. I'm like, I love this show. Yep, first season of The Office. Yeah, yeah the first season of The Office is the, bad. The it's first bad. couple of episodes of How I Met Your Mother are just cringe and yeah. kind of slow. I'm so mad that they cancelled How I Met Your Father. I am too. I was really, really enjoying that. Hillary Duff yep. is an angel. Season two, two was great. Was, hey? Season two was great. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. Yeah. But no, they cancelled it. Frasier reboot, not bad. Oh, is that out? It's the first three episodes are out. It is on Paramount Plus. So you got to pay <sighs> another- Nine ninety five. So a subscription within a subscription. Uh, yes. Time so, to put on my eye patch again. Yeah. So <laughs> wait. 
<laughs> or just wait. <laughs> Put your Tampa Bay jersey on. Yar. <laughs> wait until the episode, the full season comes out. Do your seven day free trial. Binge it. Cancel it. Uh, I did watch the first two episodes today. It's quite good. Have you? Okay. Since this is the uh, spooky spectacular, have you watched anything spooky? I saw Scream Six a little while ago. It's not exactly scary, but it's spoopy. The spooky. The Scream and movies funny. Are, spoopy. Uh, are great. I love the Scream franchise. Do you actually love the Scream yeah. franchise? Because they're they're like a movie that doesn't take themselves seriously. We it's went just we went with uh, Bree and I went with Bree and a couple of our other friends, and um, it was Bree and her friend that were like, "Oh, let's watch it." And I'm like, "Okay, this doesn't seem like your kind of movie, but all right, let's go." It took maybe thirty seconds into the movie before Bree realized that it wasn't what she thought it was, which was scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not a spoof on the uh No, it's, on it's the, the genre. It's the actual film yeah, that it's the genre. The spoof, yeah. Yeah. Well, have you played anything spooky? Did you play a spooky game today? Or I maybe not spooky, but tension. Yeah, tensions but Project were Zomboid. <laughs> you weren't wrong, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's time for Secret Neighbor to come back. Absolutely, we should be playing Secret Neighbor. We need to get a group of eight people yes. to play that game. We need more than four. Need more if than you four. have never played spo- uh, Spoopy, if you've never played Sneaker at Sneighbor, Sorry, Secret Neighbor as it's neighbor. actually called. We call it Sneaky Sneighbor. Um, it is, you play, there's like one guy, that one person that's the neighbor and then the others are all the kids, and you have to do stuff in the house without the neighbour catching you. And it's a very simple premise. It's a very fun game. Yes. And it is either rather easy and just funny, or it's cripplingly hard to win. Yeah. It's great. It's kind of like uh, Among Us, which would be more popular that people would understand. It's like Among Us, yeah. but with more gameplay, but more 3D, actual yeah. gameplay, and three-dimensional, yeah. Anyway, we're nearing on the 10 minute mark recording and we haven't started your story All good. yet. All good. We're talking about. <laughs> Sorry the- to everyone that comes for the actual <laughs> stories. We're talking about Yowies and not the chocolate. Why did you not bring Yowies? Actually, I did think of that and I had forgotten. Because Yowies are my favorite chocolate. I'm Second not even sure if you can buy them anymore. You yeah, can. Of they brought you them can. back. Yeah, yeah they're talking about. For a while. They brought them back yeah. a little while ago. Yeah, yes. they went into hiding and now they're back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A subject of crypto. Cryptozoology, the Yowie is often described as being larger than the average human, although some believe there are subspecies which are actually only four to five feet tall. Can I do my pun? Oh, sure. It's not really a pun. Hey, boy, let me dress up in a fake animal suit and then run around in the bush while you take blurry photos of me and then we'll publish them in the newspaper as if they're real and then we'll get some traction with people, but really people will know it's fake. And then, you know, for the next 20 or 30 years, it'll show up on cryptid shows like, this is proof of the Yowie! But it's really just us running around in suits. It, where was the pun in that? I don't know. I said it wasn't really This a is pun. older than people taking spoof photos. Yowie, the story of Yowie's goes back. Oh, yeah, Yowie's goes years. back ages. Yeah. I was more, you know, looking at Bigfoot. Uh, that's fair. I thought you were talking about cryptozoologists as a whole. Well, I mean, let's yeah. not talk about jokes. Uh, yes, the science of cryptozoology. Sorry, no. The pseudoscience, yeah. yeah. So I just correct myself mm-hmm. there. Pseudoscience. I, I've gone down UFO the rabbit hole. UFO researchers are also in the pseudoscience. The pseudoscience. Mm-hmm. I've gone if, down the rabbit hole lately of there's this guy on YouTube who just does like takedowns on people posting those videos that are like, do you know that the pyramids are actually connected to the stonemasons and stuff like that? It's great. Yes. Anyway. So, like I said, subspecies of yowies, 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 which, yowies, are, yowies, which are believed to be <laughs> four, <a yowdy. laughs> four to five foot tall. Yowdy partner. But they are commonly thought to be between six and 12 feet. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. That's me to two me. Yeah. Yowdy hmm. doing tonight. You know. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Yowdy, yowdy, yowdy 12 doing. foot. You know, that's pretty much the size that's w. of 24 Subway 6 inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. D, that's a lot. <laughs> Or 12 <laughs> foot longs. <laughs> nah. Go on. Okay. They have a strong physique described as robust and muscular and covered in dark, shaggy, coarse hair, which colours vary from brown to black with sometimes reddish hues. Sounds like a bear. Mm-mm. In Australia? Mm. 
Facial features have been difficult to discern as the face has been covered by the before-mentioned fur. However, some stories say that Yowies have a flat nose with some accounts mentioning piercing red or glowing eyes. Spooky. You may think this sounds familiar, and well, it does. The Yowie shares a lot of its traits with its overseas cousins. The Yeren from China, the Yeti from the Himalayas, and the Sasquatch from North America, all sharing similar descriptions inside and inside, sharing similar descriptions and shape and only fur colouring changing. It is believed that our Australian version can be more aggressive and dangerous yeah, than the Australia. more, more well known <laughs> American cousin, as the Yeti has been described as having a large red not Yeti, the Yowie has been described as having a large red mouth and talon like claws. Rawr. As for its behaviour, it's believed that they are reclusive and elusive creatures, wanting to avoid human contact and stay away from heavily populated areas. But there have been sightings of families of Yowies also. It is also said that they are shy, but there are stories of aggressiveness, aggressiveness and attacks on people. They are associated with remote, densely forested, forested or mountainous regions of Australia. They are believed to spend the daytime in areas near water and finding a safe and secure spot to sleep and come out at night time to go to higher grounds for hunting, following creeks and streams. You're nodding along. Um, when uh, doing this research... I mentioned it to you the other night. Surprisingly difficult to find information on yeah. <laughs> Yowies. Yeah, there's probably not many Australia. Like, considering the amount of animals that genuinely want to kill you in Australia, yeah. which is all of them, by the way. Mm -hmm. Which I had one in my backyard this week. Yeah, I went downstairs the other day. There was a spider just walking around. Like, I had a five-foot eastern brown snake in my backyard. We, Bree and I went to the Botanic Gardens the other day. We're walking along. Here's a snake. Mm. Yeah, everything in Australia wants to kill you. Um, oh, including no, the sorry. birds. Everything in Australia can kill you. And will do it if given the chance. Wants to, but it can, yeah. But they will do it if given the chance. Mm. And I think for that reason, the Yowie is less intimidating because mm. it's like, oh, well, it's just, it's just a big dingo. Yeah, like, I wouldn't say a kangaroo wants to kill you. Have you ever gone near a kangaroo? But it can. It's not chasing you down. Kangaroos will kill you. Yeah, but they're not chasing you down- you reckon they don't chase you down? No. Kangaroos will chase you down. Ah. All right. I mean, you can get within 10 metres without it charging you. Just because they don't one time doesn't okay. mean they don't all the time. All right. The eastern grey kangaroo chased me back inside my own house at five in the morning in Wagga. Yeah, we should have taken its girl. Uh, no, it was in my front yard <laughs> and I walked out my front door. Um, Probably six months later, I tried to walk across the grass that I'm not supposed to walk across on the army base. It was probably two well, in no the morning. no wonder it chased you. Yeah, it it's probably, protecting the grass. It was two in the morning. It's empty. It was two oh, in the morning and I just I wanted to- I could just see it moving slowly. I just wanted to go to bed. So I walked across the grass to return the key and it squared up at me and gave me a good kick. Uh, yeah. Kangaroos. After it kicked you, what did it do? Hop away? No. Kept going at me. Oh, okay. I just sprinted. Yeah, right. Yeah, kangaroos will take Didn't, you down if given the chance. Yeah, Didn't I, grab no, no shoes or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they, they like I said, uh, the Yowie supposedly uh, head for like creeks and streams for their hunting grounds. As for their diet, they are omnivorous and will eat anything available and have been known to steal chickens and other domestic farm animals. Sorry, As known. Do we have confirmed evidence that a Yowie stole a chicken? No. <laughs> oh, okay. This is just what one of the uh, research the websites I used. Was what saying. was that research website? It was, I'll get into it later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Skipping ahead, Sean, you've already found the mother load. <laughs> and other domestic farm animals, as well as fruit from orchids, and as well as, and have been spotted going through garbage bins. They have also been cited eating roadkill. As I said, they will get in, eat anything they can get their hands on. They could, if they were real. <laughs> Mm. You know, I've heard that the hey, Yowies- Hey, you just do a goddamn Halloween episode, I, all right? I've heard that the Yowie's really good at fine art. Well, I've heard that it's astonishing the fact that they take human food out of human waste and walk like humans and have hands and feet and facial, facial features and noses, but somehow aren't just hairy humans. I've heard that Yowie's- Every Yowie has a Michelin star. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I've, I find it so strange that we know the science of how the human eye works. 
when determining information in low light situations using the cone and rod cells of the eyes, obviously rod cells stimulated by rhodopsin, the chemical compound that vibrates the, uh, Sean's the rod cells that, are, that allows it to interpret low light information. Sounds like but apparently, this week. instead of seeing a person in the dark that we can't quite see properly, it must be a magic different species of man that's hairy and has red eyes. There's no magic in your life, is there? I believe in magic. I love magic. You know okay. that I love we'll magic. Get, we'll, da, 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 we are going to get to a fair few da, stories da, da, da. later on. Not at all at night time. So, oh. oh. What are you going to do with that, you yep. skeptic? Uh, yeah, yep. the Yowie, a, a territorial creature that's been what spotted are you in do? every state and territory of Australia except Victoria and Tasmania. Yeah, because those people have things better to do. Yeah, so uh, a you know a magic hairy man that lives in the forest also it's has too been spotted cold in there. two different desert states of Australia. Yeah, it's yes, too cold. Yeah. That's what you said. It's too cold. The origin of the Yowie has many different beginnings, with one being that in far north Queensland, the Cuckoo Cuc- the Cuckoo Yelengi tribe claimed they coexisted with the Yowie for many years. Sorry, what was that one again? Cuckoo Yelengi. K-U-K-U-Y-A-L-N-J-I, if you were looking it up. Apologies to anyone that knows how to say that. I've got different tribes, so I've got to dig it to another website. Okay. Um, So, yeah, they say they coexisted with the Yowies for many years and they even attacked them on more than one occasion. The Yowie attacked them or they attacked the Yowie? No, the tribe attacked the Yowies. There is even Aboriginal cave art depicting tall, hairy creatures alongside Aboriginal humans. Perhaps they were a type of hominid that went extinct. That is one theory of what the Yowie is. I've well, heard that they also have names. I've heard that there's one called Rumble, Crag, Squish, Diddy, Boof, and Nap. That's Sean's the just uh, chocolate gone Yowies. Looked up the Nestle ones. <laughs> <laughs> He's on Yowies.com. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Oh, it's a Halloween page. The, uh, there is a term that some indig- in, in some indigenous language, languages of yo uh, and that is a spirit that roams over the earth at night. Okay. Sounds a bit French. yo The first recorded sightings vary. There was a column from 1987 in the Sydney Morning Herald written by Margaret Jones that states the first sighting took place in 1795. Well. First sighting by, you know, white Europeans. Yeah. Yeah. In the 1850s, accounts of indigenous apes appeared in the Australian Town and Country Journal with a reader writing in November 1876 asking, and I quote, who has not heard from the earliest settlements of the colony, the indigenous speaking of some unearthly animal or inhuman creature, namely the Yahoo Devil Devil or Hairy Man of the Wood. The Yahoo Devil Devil is a heaps better name. You reckon? Yeah, what are we calling it the Yowie for? Uh, Yeah, because I well, Yahoo is another term I think some indigenous people have used for the Yowie. Okay. It's also known as a Yahoo. The Yahoo devil devil. I Mm -hmm. like that. And in the Northern Territory in certain areas, the spirits that wander the bush at night are sometimes called featherfoots, also known like essentially witch doctors. Mm. Mm. Six years later, amateur naturalist Henry McCooey wrote an article titled Australian Apes, claiming to have seen a Yowie on the southern coast of New South Wales. I quote an extract. A few days ago, I saw one of these strange creatures on the coast between Batemans Bay and Ladula. It's Aladulla. Aladulla, thank you. It's separated on my page. I should think that if it was standing perfectly upright, it would be nearly five feet high. It well, was sorry, tireless. that's shorter than the six to 12 subway footlongs that you quoted before. So size does matter. I also <laughs> said that there is believed to be a subspecies. Okay. All right. Between All right. All that were four right. and five foot tall. It was tailless and covered with very long black hair, which was out of a dirty red or snuff color about the throat and breast. Its eyes, which were small and restless, were partly hidden by matted hair that covered its head. I threw a stone at the animal, whereupon it immediately rushed off. I would too if I had a stone thrown at my head, but... That is, so that is some of the earliest sightings. We're now going to move. We're, now we're going to move to some more modern stories. Um, and we're actually going to start Local Boy. 
Okay. Like the greater Brisbane metro area. Yeah. As Ipswich. Okay. Is cons- I have lived there in my life. Is considered to be a bit of a hot spot for Yowies. You know, I've seen a few Yowies at uh, Riverlink <laughs> now you mention it. <laughs> Some gross people in there. Uh, yeah. The, the first story comes from the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. Okay. Where Ewan shares his story from an attack in 1982. He recounts being about 10 or 11 and home with his dad when he was awoken by a phone call from his mother. She worked at Riverview State School as a cleaner and worked 7pm to 11pm. She worked at the school with three other cleaners who were all assigned to their own buildings to clean. Ewan's mother called his father and said, you need to come down. The lady that cleans Block D is in hysterics and she's covered in blood and would continue to scream. It was black. It was hairy. And okay. it took the three other ladies to calm her. So Ewan actually went with his, father, uh, with his brother and father to the school. What like, year was this again, sorry? Uh, 1982. Okay. And he remembers when arriving through the school gate, like still able to hear the lady screaming in the admin block, like just like. I don't like that. Hysterical and just like, Mm. you know, like, yeah. He then entered the admin building and was told to wait in the reception area with his. (laughs) With his. Yeah. That's disgusting. Wipe it up. He then entered the admin building and was told to wait in the reception area while his mum took his dad into where the other lady had been, what was? Yeah. That lady then actually left the room and entered into that reception area where Ewan and his brother were waiting and he remembers seeing a huge scratch down the lady's neck, down over her shoulder and even part of her blouse being torn away and the scratch continuing down her arm. He describes the scratch running from under the jawline down to the top of the elbow, estimating it to be about four millimetres deep. He then goes on to uh, say that his dad like went down to where the lady was cleaning and like blood trail and like a large mm. pool of blood outside the room she was they go and speculate like the host of the podcast and uh, they go on to speculate you know like the yeah we'd come in looking for something and the cleaner had got in front of the exit and that's why just pushing past her of course is scratch yeah. the next story boy comes from the qt an article ah the queensland times an article written by Which- joel gould in december of 2015 Carlos Cabinet told the QT that he saw and often heard a yowie on the Yament- at Yamanto on the Flinders View side of Debing Creek. This is, this is local to like where we grew up, right? Yes. A couple of suburbs over. This is what Carlos said in the article. There was one particular time when I was 13 and camping near the creek bed and heard him in the early morning within metres of us. We jumped out of the tent and he was across the creek just looking at us with his beady eyes. He was crouching down, very big, just a hairy furball mass. If he stood up, he would easily have been eight feet. He was so hairy that you couldn't determine too many facial features, but you won't forget those eyes once you've seen them. I saw him another time when he darted behind the trees at dusk. He was always around, especially in the warmer months. Quite often you'd hear him in the distance yelling out and going off. He was a screeching kind of yelp. No animal makes that noise. We'd hear him for about 13 years, but afterwards, the end of 1992, he was never heard of again. Because that's when I was born. I was too scared to come back. <laughs> I so, scared off the yeah, we boys. <laughs> Up, cut <cut> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said- um, See, This boy knows not to mess with me. <laughs> yep, you're an intimidating sight. So, so as we- Especially as, as a baby. As I said earlier on- <laughs> They like that foresty kind of area. I looked up Riverview State School. It still kind of backs onto a large bushland area yeah. uh, that goes out towards the old mines. Same with this uh, Yamanto around Debbie Creek. There's still a lot of bushland and, and creeks out that way. So, so far, all the info checks out of supposed natural So theories. you're telling me mm. that a native Australian cryptid creature is very fond of the most common landscape on the entire continent of Australia. Yes. Okay. Yep. I mean, that does make sense. Like, it's statistically most likely to want to live there. Exactly. So when it's like, oh, they prefer the, you know, the wooded areas, that's almost the whole country. What do you want them to do? Make it up. 
<laughs> the least pertinent or interesting statistic possible. And they don't live in the desert, which is 70% well, of our country. Well, apparently they do, according to this. It says they've spotted in the NT and WA. The Kimberleys is very different. There's too. still bushland areas in the NT. Yeah, but they have a different kind of bushland area. Probably a different kind of yaoi. App- apparently there's two kinds. Mm. Yeah. The desert yaoi. <laughs> he likes sand. As opposed to the coastal yaoi. Another person with an encounter was Ray Doherty. He also has a blog dedicated to Yowie research. Nice. For the Australian Yowie Project. And it was this experience in June of 1995 in Rosewood that kick-started his interest in the Australian cryptid. Are you looking it up, boy? Yes, I am. Nice. Also, I love that Rosewood gets a mention. This is what he said. Oh, the Australian Yowie Project on, uh, on SoundCloud. Yep, that is the uh, website I was referring to before. Is it the Australian Ape Project? No, no, uh, he has, it's a blog. Um, Australian Yari Project. On SoundCloud? Mm-hmm. I thought it was just a blog when I ser- Googled it. Does he have anything to do with Rex Gilroy? Maybe not. Uh, the paranormal enthusiast, Rex Gilroy. He's a cryptozoologist that spent years popularizing the Yari. Of course, as a cryptozoologist, he's... Self-employed cryptozoologist. So this is what uh, Ray Doherty said of his experience with the Yowie. I sent you a link earlier. We're going to get to that very soon. Okay. I used to be an amateur astronomer in the 1980s and 1990s, and we used to go out through places like Rosewood and the foothills of Mount Barney, where there is some of the best viewing in winter. We'd pull off the side of the road, got our telescopes out, and sat them on the top of the car to have a look. It was around 1am and the wind had picked up and there was this real foul stench. We thought that maybe there was a dead cow nearby. Minutes later, we heard close to an ungodly sound, a cross between a shriek and a scream. There were four of us and we looked at each other and said, this can't be. The stench smelt like it was getting closer. We had some high powered spotlights and shone them in the nearby field where we saw the red eyes of the cattle. But then we spotted what looked like big yellow eyes. We looked through binoculars and the eyes would change colour as the head moved. Then we saw it stand up. You could make out this fuzzy shape, all of it, and all of a sudden it rose up to stand seven or eight feet and started slowly moving towards us. Then we took off, headed into Rosewood and discussed it. We went back half an hour later and found no evidence of anything except a fence that was pushed down in the same area. So On they Ray's- found a pushed over fence. Yeah, I found a pushed over fence. Okay. On Ray's blog, he has an article about a scientific analyst of an alleged Yowie hair follicle, which was determined to be to belong to a creature, air quotes, right on the border of human and apes. Okay. How did they determine that? DNA? Uh, I think the DNA was inconclusive. Ah, uh, yes. Do they still have this hair? I believe it is. Yeah, I believe okay. he, he says he still has it. So we can directly trace like the lineage of somebody that died in Pompeii to their modern ancestor, but we have no idea what this random hair is. Yeah, because we've never found one before. That's right. What do you want him to do? Just make it up? Sean's getting the Halloween episode next year. <laughs> Deal. This is exactly, Deal. <laughs> this is Deal. exactly how I thought he'd act too. I know. I knew it was coming. The QT also stated in an article that they had cited a top secret file on a Yowie sighting in Red Bank Plains. Where Sorry, a woman hold on. Sorry, top secret hold file from top where? Secret file, yep. From hold where? On. Who had this top secret file? Doesn't say. Which Red Bank Plains spotting? 1986 or 1989? I'm not sure. Because I'm on australianyowiehunters.com.au. By the way, they have merch. <laughs> Hell Yeah. <laughs> We're going to, oh, sure, I'm going to get Aaron to pull up a, a website in a minute and I'm going to potentially get you to select one and I'll get Aaron to select one and we'll go through that story. Brilliant. So this lady in Rebank Plains claimed to have seen a Yowie in bushland in that area. And again, I quote from the article, her sighting occurred close to a residential housing in broad daylight and lasted about 12 minutes during which she watched a large, hairy, bipedal creature through binoculars. 
broad daylight, Sean. 12 minutes, not a flash. Watched it for 12 minutes in daylight. Get any footage of it? Uh, <laughs> not. <laughs> I think this was in the 90s, still before we had okay. smartphones. Okay, all right. All right. All right. Interesting that we haven't seen one in the last 20 years no. and we've all had cameras on us at all times. How are the spooks feeling so far? Yeah, not spooked. <laughs> a couple of days later, the QT posted the follow-up article with Yari researcher Dean Harrison, who has not only seen a Yari, but he says he has almost been killed by one twice on two different occasions. First in Ormu at the Gold Coast and the second was in Kilkivian. Kil- Kill Kiven, near Gimpy. Kill Kiven. This is what he said of his story. That was a game changer. I can't go back into the bush by myself. I just got hit with a big dose of reality. I nearly got taken down by one at Ormo. And in 1997, and that was really scary. It was only by the grace of God that I survived. I made a phone call at 11pm in a clearing before going into the bush. And if I hadn't, I wouldn't be here today. This thing really meant business. And I don't understand what he means here, but this is directly what he says. But the crunch here was in 2009 at Kilkiven. And a few days, sorry. And if a few guys weren't there to rescue me, I wouldn't be here. That took a good eight months to get over. The scary thing is that Yowies have a massive advantage over us because of their eyesight in the dark. The thing that knocked me over ran down a hill in pitch darkness, past obstacles, trees, and logs. The angles were so steep, but it sprinted down. It didn't miss a beat. The one that chased me at Ormu was the same. Later in the article, he claims he once saw a Yowie get tagged with a tracking device by intelligence agents at a rural Queensland army base in the 1990s. It appears that the QT reached out to ASIO at the time, to ask if they were tracking any Yowies, to which they replied, and I quote again, air quotes, not currently monitoring any Yowies. Okay. (laughs) There you go. There's your proof. Well, it's been great. Uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Uh, What's the proof? I mean, ASIO. Yeah, you know, their wording there is pretty conclusive. They're not yes, doing it. Because any time a secret now, organization says we're not doing something, that definitely means they're doing they're something. Absolutely and doing it. Crap Look, with the UFOs in America. They just said made it they're worse. not currently monitoring any Yowies. They didn't say they Yowies didn't exist. If you're exist a government organization and you get asked a question that's so stupid that if you give it a legitimate answer, everyone's going to twist it out of proportion, you have to give the democratic answer. And that was that answer. No, it's pretty obvious they're investigating Yowies. All right. So now, boy, if you can pull up the website link I gave you before. Is it yowiehunters.com.au? Uh, no, it that is- That one? The first one? No, no, that's the video. Go up. That, that one. one? Yeah, it's the yeah, same yeah. website. Right. So this is a list of reported sightings just from Queensland. If you want to have a scroll down. One in alpha. Right, so they've got New South Wales, Victoria, and all that as well. Um, but this is just the Queensland sightings. Sean, if you would like to pick one sighting, we'll go through. Boy, if you would like to pick a sighting, we'll go through that as well. If one jumps out at you, it's quite a few. There, there is quite a lot, isn't there? Hmm. Where's one which, that's in a place that I know? Which town do I like the least? <laughs> <laughs> is there any for Townsville? Oh, the two in Red Bank Plains, two in Rocky. Oh, Toowoomba, Tin Can Springbrook Bay. has had a lot of like, the high mountainous area. That's apparently a Yowie hotspot. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Slacks Creek. Slacks Creek? Yeah. Mm. Yep, known for Yowies and Ikea furniture. I do love me a strand bond. I'm going, I want to go with Cairns. No. Let's go with Childers. Childers in 2004? Okay. Okay. Let's see. I haven't gone through all of these, so this is going to be new to me as well. Do you want to read it out, boy? Location, Childers, Queensland. Event, Yowie sighting. (laughs) Date, 2005. Time, 6.15 p.m. Still daylight. I'm a truck driver. Earlier, I'd stopped in Jinjin for dinner and an eight-hour sleep before continuing on to King Arroyo in my Kenworth. 
So I was well rested. I was on the Isis Highway about 15 to 20 kilometres south of Childers. There were scattered trees, rocks and long grass on the side of the road and it was all flat land. I've been down this road plenty of times before, but this time something was different. Nah, nah, nah. No artistic (laughs) license. You read it as is. It was straight road and I was doing about 75 to 80 kilometres building up speed. I was looking out for kangas and in the distance on the left hand side- What did I say about paraphrasing? In the grass was what I thought at the time was a cow. Moo, he said. I said, what? As I was getting closer, I thought it was a bloke. Then I thought, that's no bloke. I saw all this hair all over his body and it was fossicking through the grass with a stick leaning forwards. I knew exactly what I seen and I seen what I knew I seen what it was. (laughs) It was standing just inside the fog line, which is just in the grass on the side of the road. I had a cold chill come over me and I was emotional. All these years driving and not believing this stuff. But now I best believe it. You're discrediting this website by It was just going about its business. I geared down and phoned me Sheila, and she didn't (laughs) believe me. Then I swore in my son's life it was true. Yeah, because that's what he did at the time. Later, a truck came up behind me, and I got on the radio and said, Hey, buddy boy, did you see anything unusual? And he said, No. Oh, spooky. I said, are you sure you didn't see nothing? He said, no. Then I told him what I saw and he thought I was mad. Oh, I think that's enough. You got one, Sean? I picked Mount Isa, Queensland, 1979 times 6 p.m. I was just a kid at the time working on what was back then Ardmore Station out of Mount Isa. It's between Mount Isa and Dejarra. I was working there as a jackaroo. There was about 12 of us, including a few fellas. I'm not going to use that word. And some other- Oh, no. I had to edit one of the- uh, oh, I heard him. He heard you. Gross. Yeah. Uh, there was a few fellas and some other ringers. Uh, <laughs> we all saw it. It was just on dusk or around 6 p.m. Okay. Cool. Ambiguous term followed by an actual time. <laughs> exact time. <laughs> I'm just saying, mine was more fun. Uh, And we were all sitting around our swags having dinner. The cook had a caravan there and there was a border collie tied up under the van. The dog started screaming its head off. I've never heard anything like it. I've never heard a dog yelp like that. It was just horrific. We all looked over and this thing was standing in front of it. We were looking at its back and it wasn't moving. Then the dog was silent. You could hear a pin drop. And then this thing loped off. My view of it loping off was side on. The dog was dead. I believe the dog died of fright. I think its heart gave out. The only reason this animal came to our attention was because the dog was literally screaming and it was standing only about 30 feet away and we all saw it. It was just like a small ape. It was brown with long hair. We couldn't see the dog because the thing was standing in front of it, but it was screaming and then suddenly silent. We're having dinner. I was sitting on my swag with my plate on my knee. We were eating and there's this thing that looked like a small ape. I'd see how he's going back in time here. This is good. It wasn't that tall. <clears throat> the fellas there called it uh, a Janjari. They said there's two different types. There's big ones and small ones. Okay. Uh, and the small ones are the ones to look out for. Oh, yes, yeah. They are meat eaters, and they're the ones you don't want to get involved with. They tracked it for a while, but the tracks just stopped, and they went nowhere, unsurprisingly. Uh, it was stooped over. If it stood up, I'd probably say it was about five feet tall. It wasn't skinny like a rake, but it wasn't big like a gorilla either. It was solid, but there was a lot of hair on it. Uh, It was a kelpie color with long brown hair, and it was longer than a bear's hair. Of course, a common animal you would see in Australia. Uh, It didn't look at us. The fellas said it was rare for them to show themselves to people. Uh, They see them all the time, but for people... They see them is rare. Everybody was speechless, jaws dropped, and then the fellas kept saying, Stop saying Janjari. That. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> After the dog stopped yelping, it just sort of loped off. We walked over and checked on the dog, and it was dead. I didn't hear anything or smell anything. A very freaking thing that happened just before the incident I got a letter from my mother. She had cut out an article from the Woman's <laughs> Weekly and had put it in the letter. She had absolutely no way of knowing I was camping in the exact place where 
this took place. The story was about a group of men who were camped out at Eight Mile Camp at Ardmore Station back in the 50s. The article she sent me in the letter. Apparently, they were sleeping in two-man tents. One of the guys called Roy. Jeez, that's a lot of race stuff in this story. <laughs> I think that's There's enough a man the named story. Roy. Blank sentence. His, his mate woke up in the middle of the night while Roy was screaming his head off. He was disappearing under the side of the tent. His mate grabbed his shoulders and started pulling back. It was like a huge tug of war with him. And whatever he had, whatever had Roy, his mate won and managed to pull him back into the tent. His legs were cut to ribbons, nearly down to the bone. I got this letter from my mother the exact same day, capital letters, and only hours before as our Yowie experience. Ooh, that one's a bit more spooky. Mine was just some truck driver that's yeah, probably high drove, on no dose. <laughs> just drove past him. Drove past bush. probably a kangaroo. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Well, I personally haven't encountered a, ye- a yaoi. Haven't. Just in haven't case. you? Nope. Only the chocolate kind. But what I do remember is a story I heard on the radio one morning. I was about uh, maybe 12 or 13. In Dickity 2. Hey, what? Heard a story on the radio. Oh. I was dignity. listening to Triple M's No Repeat Work Day. It wasn't, tri- it wasn't Triple M. It was ABC Talkback. Oh, geez, my, that's not better. My dad is old. Okay? I listen to ABC Talkback. Don't you start ragging on 4BC. That's my favorite channel. Boy, do you listen to podcasts? <laughs> yeah. That's Same just, thing. That's just modern talkback uh, radio. Yeah, How many modern. radios We're do I We're doing a modern talkback radio now. How many radios do I have in my I house? I mean, it's not talkback radio because no, no one can back. call us. I mean, Bree could call us, but why would she? How many radios does Sean have in his house? Oh, I don't know. 12. How many of them are FM? Probably two. One of them. Yeah. The rest of them are AM. I listen to 4BC on all of them. Yeah. So I remember it being ABC Talkback. It was early morning, maybe four o'clock in the morning, because we were going, we were taking the boat down to Gold Coast. I love how John's Yowie story is just, I heard a story yeah. on the radio. No, no, I'll get there. <laughs> so we're at the service station, Ebervar, filling yeah. up, and dad was out filling up the boat or filling up the car, whatever. And I remember hearing this dude ring up and tell his Yowie story. And it was just him driving through a road in Gympie, coming across this creature in the middle of the road Mm. and stopping. He then said the thing either bashed on his car or leant on it and like left a handprint or a dint in the bonnet of his car. Right. Before taking off through the scrub. The reason I remember it is because the dude telling the story Sounded so goddamn scared, it freaked me out as a kid listening yeah, to right. it. Yeah, right. Ghost bumped him. Yeah, that's why I remember it. The dude sounded so terrified just recounting this story. Yeah. Like, it just, like, what, secondhand, thirdhand yeah. gave me the chills. And I'm just like, yeah. Ah, oh, three spoopy, five you. <laughs> Too spooky for you. All right. So, if you Google, and we'll put some photos up on the socials, but if you Google Yowie statue, you can find many a statue made out of the fabled creature, and you'll probably get the Kilcoy statue appear first in your search results. Man, I was in Kilcoy. Yeah. No, I was in Kingaroy. Don't worry. No. If you go, if you find yourself in King, uh, Kilcoy, you go to the main park, there's a two and a half meter tall Yowie statue right there. Nice. That's dope. We're going to have one more story from Gimpy. Because it also appears Gimpy is a bit of a hot spot. Mm. Tony Duffy claims to have met intelligent Yowies. Oh, okay. He said, I got a fright and so did he. He was quickly able to learn a few words in English and we spoke for about two hours. They're very intelligent. He then claims that the Yowie returned the following night with his wife and daughter. He then claimed to have had seven encounters in a 12-month period. And that was from an interview... Uh, he did with the Gimpy Times in September of 2014. Right. So he's obviously making that one up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I had a conversation with him for two hours and the next day I had it over for dinner, you know. I brought the wife and kid, you know. We had a couple of tinnies and talked about the footy. Potentially, as in all of these stories could be made up or these, this, these could be these people's truths. But I remember listening to a, a Sasquatch podcast. Mm. And something very similar with them, they believe that the people had meet met with Sasquatches and taught them basic words. And so, if that's if they're like a cousin or like a, all the same species, it's, I guess it could be. Yeah, like we've got 
corroborating it is stories cool that there's from all around these the world. Very similar stories all over mm-hmm. the world. So now, before we've got a couple of videos for you guys to watch. Yep. Um, I'm going to leave you with some practical tips. Oh, okay. What to do if you have a run-in with Australia's Bigfoot? Take a clear photo. <laughs> this information's come from AYR, Australian Yowie Research website, yep. which can be found at yowiehunters.com.au. They say if you encounter a Yowie at night, shine a bright torch in the eyes and make a lot of loud noise. They say the Yowie will try and scare you off and then it will follow you at a 45-degree angle. They also claim that apparently the Yowies get a kick out of scaring people, but you could be in real danger if you find yourself alone with one that has bad intentions. Well, yeah, that's just humans. Yeah, true. It's because <laughs> they are humans. So do you want to have a look at the, uh, the video, boy? And yeah, let's bloody have a look at this thing. I couldn't really find great videos, but these are the best ones I could find. Yeah, that's that's the thing walking through the forest. So that's that's it. That's all that one is. Cool. So we'll have them linked in the link tree if you want to go find these quick little short videos of alleged yowies. Sure. That is the Australian yowie. Have you, Aaron or Sean, heard of any other Australian cryptids? Do you know of any off the top of your head? I've no. I've looked at a few. Yeah, I've looked into up. a few, but I. Off the top of my head, there's this like carnivorous pterodactyl raptor thing in my bob. I have not heard of this one. No. Hang on. So the ones I looked up is one you I'm sure you would have heard of, the Bunyip. Oh yeah. Um the Panther in I think is oh, in yeah. the Victorian. That's not really, that's not really, that's a cryptid. Not really a cryptid. That's they just think it's a panther. They think there's a, a panther roaming the wilds in was it Victoria or Yeah, Otway's Panther. That's a that's a really interesting one. It it yeah. comes under cryptids because no one's really sure if Right. If it if is it's a, true. Yeah. Tasmanian tiger actually come up under the title. Not, of a, cryptid. Cryptid. Not a cryptid. That's I an know that existed. I know. I'm just saying for some reason when you look up Australian cryptids, yeah, because the there's Tassie not enough of them. They're just making shit up. <laughs> is there? The bunyip's an interesting one. It's meant to be like this large guana crocodile yeah. type thing. What's this pterodactyl? Oh, where are we? The Burren Jaw. Conflicting descriptions of this giant reptilian indigenous cryptid, but documented sightings from the 1950s to the late 1990s describe the 80s, sorry, describe the creature as walking on two legs akin to a 20th century Tyrannosaurus Rex. Local legends depict the Burren Jaw, nicknamed the by the Aboriginal peoples as the Old Three Toes as a nocturnal reptile that feasts on native animals like cattle and kangaroos, leaving monstrous footpaths and leaving livestock in its wake. More recent investigations have led to the belief that the lower outbank between South Australia and the Northern Territory is home to a large lizard, the Perinti, which can grow up to three metres in length and devour animals as large as goats. In terms, Isn't that just a crocodile? In terms of the a old crocodile. three toes, no sightings have been documented in almost 40 years. Has the Burringer gone extinct, if it ever existed, or is it just one of the many dinosaurs that have been found among Australia's fossil footprint? Kind of just sounds like a crocodile. Not that one. That one sounds a bit bigger, but mm. the other one. It's just just interesting that we get all these dinosaur yeah. stories. Loch, Loch Ness mm. could be an old, what is it, Plediosaurus or something like that. Very interesting because, yeah, one of, the, um, one of the articles I was reading was like an actual – scientist mm. and he's like you know it's all well and good we poke fun at the cryptozoologists but they do help in some things and they referenced like uh, three or four uh species that have been identified through cryptozoologists looking for other things right and, and they're just saying you know like 10 percent of the insects of the world have been identified and they believe like only half a species in the amazon rainforest have been identified mm. so there are things out there that yet to yeah. be discovered Maybe one day we'll find a real, real Yowie and it won't just be a dude in a suit. Dude in a suit, yeah. Well, that well, is the Yowie. Thanks for listening to the <laughs> spooky spectacular number three. So spooky. Just to be clear, we've never named any of the other ones. No, no. <laughs> That, but we're just starting at three. It was, that was, we'll start in the name at three, but we've had yep. one and two, which was, what was the first one? Uh, was that the movie? Was that? 
Yeah, that was the one with the skeletons in the- Yeah, that was the cursed yeah. movie sets. Yeah. And then we had uh, the Annabelle doll. Yes. Yep. was last year's. Yep. Go back and find those ones. They're classics. They were classic all classics. stories that Listen also got these two skeptics just poo-pooing <laughs> on it the whole way through. <laughs> well, I think this is your first Halloween one, isn't it, Sean? I think this is my first yeah. Halloween one, yeah. So it was just me until now. Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, good story, boy. Thank you for bringing that one to us. I've actually been wanting to do Yowie for a little while. I'm glad we got to hit it because it is a classic Australian yeah. one. Just because, like I said, I remember that story in the car and then when I started researching it, I heard this story from like the mm. local school and I went, I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. Bit of fun. Good stuff. I'm glad that it got to be that local too. Mm. Find us on the socials. At Cheeky Tales Pod on Facebook, Twitter and X. Twitter and X is the same. You mean Instagram and X. <laughs> Shite. And now YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube, at Cheeky Tales Pod as well. And apparently on, on yaoihunters.com.au is now this is going to end up as reference oh, material for sure. the podcast section <laughs> of their website. If we make it on there, what, we've hit the big time. What do you mean? Of course. I referenced them. They didn't reference us. <laughs> exactly. Did you not notice that there's a podcast page on that no, website? No, I didn't. I, know, I knew there is a podcast. Get us on that page, Get boy. Get us on there. I was, yeah, if I had more time, I've been pretty busy this week. I probably would have reached out to old mate. We Get might have had them a phone call on him. there. Still reach out to him. We can do a follow-up. Yeah, okay. Fair anyway, enough. hit us up on the on the socials at Cheeky Tales Pod. Uh, it would be good to see you there. Uh, give us a subscribe and share the episode with someone that might enjoy Aussie cryptids. You know what? Uh, what was that website for the Australian? Yowiehunters.com.au. Hit Get it up. Get to yowiehunters.com.au. Hit them up. Get on there. Go to sightings. Go to a state. Read read one or pick one. Tell us your favourite sightings that have been on that website because there yeah, are do it. there are a lot. It's yowiehunters.com.au, not yowieworld.com.au. <laughs> That's for the chocolates. <laughs> also go to yowieworld.com.au. Yeah, order some chocolates. Yep. Yeah. Great All chocolates. Right. Let's wrap this up. Good night, everyone. Good night, Chiquitos. Ta-ta.